Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to talk about game optimization, particularly things like overdraw, faces inside faces and simple things like face orientation and how you can fix those things. This is all part of a freelance contract I've got with Atlas Empires, a game, links in the description. I'm also going to link to a playlist with lots of other videos about making models for games. So here in front of us you can see a model of the Great Hall level 10, which is very exciting. Now it all looks great and happy, <laughs> which is what I sent off, but I accidentally uh, didn't check a couple of things. So first of all, a nice simple one was face orientation. You can go up to overlays just there and down to face orientation and it will give you a colored representation of which way your normals are facing. And for anything that's a single sided plane, so you can see actually these banners are single sided. So that side is drawn on and that side is open and you can just about see the background there but that's not going to cause any problems. But what will cause problems is this one here. So into edit mode and I can select that face. I can flip direction with shift N this time. If that doesn't work you can just click the inside option down here on recalculate normals. So that's a nice simple one to start with. The more complex issue I've got, you'll notice that when I go into edit mode is I've got loads of faces inside faces. I'll just turn off face orientation now. Oh, which you can't do in edit mode. That's a little bit frustrating actually. There we go, face orientation into edit mode. And can you see, in fact, you don't even need that on. You can see lots of faces inside faces, which is a bit of a pain. Although if I look at one of these, because it's a modular design, let's go into edit mode and press L because it's all joined together now. Because when, it, when I export them, I join them together. So let's try and find one. There we go. There's a beam that's going into the middle. Now, if I take a look at this, it's a bit of a tedious job. I've got to go into this and delete um, all these faces that we can't see. So I'll delete those to start with. So delete faces and just check that that's not affecting anything uh, else. Good stuff. And let's go to this face here now. So it's going to be tough to select these. But what I'll do, I'll press L over this one. No, it's even tough to select that actually. Uh, Alt A to deselect all. I just remember to put my key screencast keys on. So L over this one. Yeah, there we go. And let's have a quick look. Now there's a cut there which is actually perfect. So this isn't a good example of what I want to explain, but I'll just quickly get rid of that. So three into face mode and let's select those faces there. And I can press delete faces and get rid of those. Right, let's try and find something else that's a bit more the point I'm trying to make. So this one here. Okay, so we've got a sort of platform that sticks out at the front. So I've selected that plane there and I want to hide everything else. So I think it's Shift H these days, yes. So you can see that's just one single plane. So I've got nothing to delete. And in fact, I think I'm right in saying that's not going to cause a problem. If I come back and bring everything else back, so Alt H to unhide everything. And I'll just quickly come out of edit mode you can see that although it's coming right into here, if we go inside again, a little bit tricky to see, it's not actually affecting anything because it's not got any faces, any extra faces on the inside here. So it's not causing extra polygons, it's just more of a distance. And that shouldn't make too much of a difference to the game's performance. To illustrate this point a little bit further, you can see that I've got a shield here. And if I go into edit mode, I've got this sort of front bit here, if I press L for link selection on that object, then you can see this is an entirely separate object and I've just inserted it into the main body of the shield. Now if I select these end points here and press G and then X and it was inserted in that far, it shouldn't make too much difference. Ideally it's good practice because of texture space to make sure that it's as close as possible because otherwise those UVs, if they're all the way out here, will take up more space to paint and there's wasted space in our UV maps. So ideally you bring them back as far as you can, but it shouldn't make any difference if they're here or here in terms of processing power because we've got the same amount of verts and polygons, as far as I'm aware anyway. There is however another issue with overdraw in terms of transparent textures, but that's for another time and we're not using transparent textures within the Atlas Empire models. So if you are using a modular approach, and your module happens to be all the way out here, that's absolutely fine. I can then use this object in other places. Let's say there was a round shield, I could use this middle object there as well. That's the usefulness of using this sort of modular design because we only have to paint this once and therefore that's the only texture space that we'll use. The other way you might think of modeling is to let's go to these two faces, inset them, and then if you've got loop tools 
plugin. You can change it to a circle, which really hasn't worked there. Probably something to do with my orientation, but I'll just do it by hand very quickly. So that's the other way of producing a similar result. And this approach is absolutely fine. As long as you're not creating too many polys, I think this would end up being pretty much the same. Although the face count might be slightly more, the vert count would be the same. And I think that's slightly more important as I understand it. So this way of modeling is absolutely fine, but you haven't got that versatility if you want to repeat this texture. If we have another round shield with this in the middle, we can remap it to the same area, but it's a lot tougher shifting the UVs around. And occasionally, there's just no point in adding the extra polygons in when you can just place an object on top of another and it's absolutely fine. So the main thing I'm looking for is where there's extra faces. Let's go back into edit mode and choose something like this area here. Now you can see there's loads of extra faces on the inside and I need to go in and delete them. A nice easy way to do that is find the most distant face and press control plus and that will grow your selection. So if I press control plus again and go outside of my shape, you can see that it's actually selecting things over here. So I want to go control minus, so I get rid of that selection and then I can press delete. This one here, for example, control plus, grow that selection. And again, I have to go control minus because I've got some that have, are actually visible and press delete faces. So again, tiny bit tedious, but that's what you have to do to get these things optimized, especially when you're thinking about mobile games. So that's my task today, is to go around all these and try and delete these faces. I might find it easy on something I haven't joined together, in fact. I'll probably go back a stage in one of my saves. And that's really important as well. If I go across the file and open, you can see that I've got several steps, and I do try and label my steps as well, so I can easily go back knowing exactly where I was up to. So I won't use these exporting ones. I'll use the text to complete, because the exporting ones is where I started joining shapes together. So I can go back to here and all should be good. So a couple of tips there for game optimization. Do let me know in the comments below about what you'd like to see. I am reading all the comments, so I am putting together a sort of playlist and as I work, I record things in line with what people want. So thanks for all your support with this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.